Coming up, the NCCU Dance Program plans to partner with local high schools. Plus, from the classroom to the stands, let's see what the sound machine has been up to. This is Central News. From the broadcast studio in the Department of Mass Communication at North Carolina Central University, this is Central News. The NCCU Dance Program plans to partner with Riverside High School in Southern High School. I found more on the story. The NCCU Dance Program plans to build their program from the ground up. They plan to do so by working with local high schools to build their program and build a foundation of unity. At the start of COVID, the NCCU Dance Program lost several of their members because dance was pushed to an online platform. NCCU wasn't the only school that had to move their dance program to online. Unfortunately, so did Southern School of Energy and Sustainability High School and Riverside High School. Concerts were canceled and hope was lost. All three schools have decided to come together and produce a dance concert. They will call this project the Bull City Bridge Concert. Professor Christy Johnson plans to coordinate with the other professors at the two high schools to get the concert done. The Bull City Bridge Project is a community campus partnership between the dance program at North Carolina Central University and two high school dance programs in DPS, Riverside High School and Southern High Schools. The program will offer select high school student dancers who have special potential and demonstrate a strong commitment to their passion for dance and opportunity to participate in the community dance ensemble where students will receive professional level training in preparation for a collaborative concert featuring dancers from all three programs. The purpose of this partnership is to build bridges between the dance community in Durham to increase opportunities for integration and engagement. The mission will be to provide opportunities for high school and university student dancers to build community through dance while fostering artistic growth in dance training and performance. Professor Johnson hopes to gain the connection that was lost through dance again. NCCU went down to five dance students and both high schools went down to under three dance students. Some of Professor Johnson's top dancers here at NCCU, Aisha Mayo and Jaya Gomez, will help her accomplish this project. They will be sent some of Southern School of Energy and Sustainability and Riverside High School's top dancers to help and create the show that will take place on April 9th and 10th. This will give the NCCU Dance Program the opportunity to work with the community and high schoolers will get the professional side. Professors at both high schools have helped Professor Johnson out many of times, so the Bull City Project is just another way to strengthen the bridge and the knowledge that flows in the community. The heartbeat of our campus was founded over 80 years ago. Let's look to Zenobia for more on the story. Members of the Sound Machine say the band room is where their NCCU journey begun and holds some of their best cherished memories. Freshman year of band is where it begins. You meet your freshman siblings and from day one you are taught to have each other's backs. If you have an issue with one member, you have an issue with all. Students spend majority of their time together, building bonds that will last a lifetime. Section pride runs deep. Each section has a unique name and traditions that are passed down year to year through section leaders. Bandsmen are pushed to be creative and encouraged to discover their hidden talents. Members are able to make arrangements for the band, help create field shows, and create dance routines. These committees are created by the band director and headed by student leaders. Being a part of band, it makes you feel like you're a part of something, that like you're actually a part of the school. And so from day one, I always knew I was supposed to be here. The Sound Machine has produced numerous musicians and successful professionals. Members take away life lessons and experiences that will help benefit them forever because of the bonds, traditions, and opportunities given to them while a part of the Sound Machine. Serving Central in the community for numerous years, the Sound Machine loves to share their passion of music with others through football games, 1040 breaks, and community events. It's not too often that you hear people living off the grid. Let's look to Raniqua for more on the story. I'm here at Brightwood Farm, the home of social activist and founder of the Other America Movement nonprofit organization, Shedrick Gibbs. The Durham native wears many hats to include being the CEO of the popular tattoo shop, Black Rose Collective, and also the face of his nonprofit organization. 
The undertaking of Brightwood has been Gibbs' biggest project yet due to him giving up what seems to be a life of normalcy to live solely off of his environment. Growing up, Gibbs was never afraid to get his hands dirty as he was raised on a farm where he learned the skills of carpentry and gardening from his grandfather. He wanted to create a space for black people to reconnect with nature and each other. His vision for Brightwood is to become a self-sustained community for black people and black business. The reason for Brightwood is community, pure and simple. It's a place for us to focus on a self-sustainable lifestyle and black economics. The impact that Gibbs hopes to make on the world through Brightwood is a legacy of peace, understanding, communication, and idea sharing within the black community. His aspirations for Brightwood is to be a place to facilitate black generational wealth. Homestead living may be out of the norm for some people, but the simple yet sufficient lifestyle is more common than you may think. I'm Raniqua Pearsall with your report for Central News. Planet Fitness now has to deal with their members and their opinions on whether they should wear masks or not. Let's look to Naki for more on the story. Thank you. As you can see, I'm currently outside of Planet Fitness right now, where you can see members excited and eager to get in and get their workout, to lose fat, to get snatched, and get a six pack. This Planet of Fitness opened last December, and from the start, members were required to wear masks. A lot, if not all, complied to the rules because it was a state order and many feared COVID. Sometime in March, the mask mandate was lifted, and faster than you can say no mask, members flooded the gym with eagerness because they were not required to wear a mask. Members felt as if things were getting back to normal. That is until the new mask mandate was implemented in July. The mandate caused great division amongst the members. You would have thought that it was an election going on. You have the pro mass versus non mass each side trying to express their beliefs and convince themselves and everyone that their side is the best. I think it's important, especially in a gym, because there's a lot of germs and stuff being passed around from equipment to equipment. Um, you don't know who's coming in from off the street, what kind of germs or diseases that they're carrying. So I think it's a good idea that we wear masks inside the gym, in the locker rooms, all that stuff. Members enjoy working out without a mask, but that came to a halt with the mandate. You have some that don't mind following the rules, and you have those that want to rebel and fight for what they feel is right. Everyone cares about their safety, but members are upset because they took the vaccine for this reason, to become immune to the virus and not have to wear a mask. Who's right? Who's wrong? Do I comply or do I rebel because I'm taking the vaccine? These are questions that members and founders have to deal with when it comes to the new mask mandate. At the end of the day, safety is priority. But just how far is one willing to go from what they believe in? You heard it here first. Reporting for Central News, Nike Martin. Thank you for watching Central News. Don't forget to tune in next Friday at 12 noon. And always remember to soar in truth and service. I am Nala Sally, 